Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Restored to More. We are so excited for you guys to meet our guests today, Adam and Carissa Keen. Adam and Carissa have been working as a coach therapist team since 2011 and are dedicated to helping couples become intimately connected, get adventurous, and find purpose. They also serve couples all over the world through online marriage counseling and coaching as well as speaking. You can connect with them on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, and their podcast at Dear Young Married Couple. Adam and Carissa hold master's degrees from Viola University and National University, respectively, and are both certified facilitators through Prepare and Enrich Marriage Counseling. Adam and Carissa, we're so glad to have you guys on the podcast. Thanks for being with us today. Aw, thank you guys. It's, it's an honor. We it appreciate really is. it. We're, we're looking forward to the conversation. Yes. Yeah, we got some fun stuff up our sleeves. So oh, yeah. uh, before we get started in talking about some of that stuff, I would love for our listeners to get to know you guys a little bit in your background. Can you share with us just a little bit about your story and where you guys are at today? Yes. Yes. Chris, before this was like, hey, you know, if you're telling a story, keep it brief. Because <laughs> <laughs> like, it, it's really amazing how God uh, creates your story and, yeah. and brings you to where you are today. So right. it was a lot of for... I would say fortuitous, but a lot of God in our mm-hmm. story that that helped us get to where we are today. Yes, um, Krista has been counseling for um, over a decade now, um, and I was a youth pastor. I think when things started uh, changing for us, mm-hmm. um, so she's a well. She was at that point when I was a youth pastor, just got her uh, LMFT license, and was starting to do therapy. And I was loving on youth. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and we did that together, of course. Yep. And it was really there where we started working with people mm-hmm. and wanted to see people become whole. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think that's where that was birthed. And then mm-hmm. fast forward, um, how many years, babe? Several years. And yeah. then we just, um, started getting asked to speak at marriage retreats, marriage conferences. And well, they were asking Chris, uh, and Chris is like, <laughs> Hey babe, um, would you come with me and speak on marriage? And I'm like, baby, I know how to make a marriage work kind of, <laughs> but I am not like, sp- I-, I have no knowledge of like what to say here. <laughs> and she's like, but just come with me. I'm like, okay, fine. <laughs> so that's kind of like how it started. In the beginning, yeah, as far as speaking goes. Yes. And then as we started speaking, we started curating our resources and we're like, we need to write a book. And, but we've only been married for, at that point, what was it like um, six years, Eight, yeah, seven years? Yeah, and, something like that. and we're like, so who's going to listen to us? Yeah. And so we're like, I don't know, maybe we should just curate you know, uh, advice from other couples and write it to young married couples. And, um, so that was a book idea, dear young married couple. And then, um, we're like, well, let's start, um, uh, social media to kind of curate the advice before we start writing the book. We did do a writing retreat, started writing the book. And then we realized that a lot of resources were needed um, before the book came out. So the book is still in progress, actually. It's been several <laughs> years, but uh, we've put out a lot of other resources for couples in the meantime. The book got shelved. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like it's like transferred into a ton of resources that you guys have created for people. Why don't you share those? We normally have to share at the end, but man, let's get into the good stuff right now. So what did that, after you put the book on hold, what did you first start creating and and how did it progress from there? Yeah. Well, we realized uh, after having worked with many, many couples, and then Adam forgot to say, he actually got um, certified in life coaching and did a bunch of uh, marriage programs, training, Gottman, Prepare and Rich, all of that. So we started doing work together. Um, and so- and seeing couples together. Seeing a lot of couples. Yeah. And uh, a lot of broken trust, a lot of affairs, breaches and trust. And a lot of what broke down is that the couples were not talking and having the crucial conversations um, about their values, about their upbringing, about their, um, you know, secrets are the buffer to intimacy. And there were a lot of secrets, whether it was, you know, secrets that they just didn't want them to find out or secrets that just felt too heavy to share. Like maybe it was just so heavy and deep that it 
took a lot of emotional umph to share it. And so we realized that, you know, people weren't having the crucial conversations. So we decided to create card decks for couples on the go. And they are, um, each deck has 52 cards um, pertaining to that particular uh, genre. We could talk more if you want us to about the different decks, but um, basically they are questions to get the couple talking about the stuff that matters. I love that. Well, Seriously, I, so oh, cool. Yeah. We love cards. Oh yeah, we are very competitive. Unfortunately, um, <laughs> we're all sort of that in the early nice. days. And we did so many things like what you so guys many. created. Yes, we, we wish we had had your cards when we were dating. Oh. When we were engaged, we went through a, a few different. I won't say all the different things we've done because yeah, not everything's True. not all of them are appropriate to. Give, <laughs> Some of the other things you buy are not very appropriate. You're like, whoa, right. appropriate. And I don't, I don't want to sponsor those. But um, <laughs> yep. what say is I, I love your perspective because it's, it's, it's healthy. And mm. there are questions that we did, we, a few of them were good, like the 101 questions to ask before mm-hmm. you get engaged. And that kind yeah. of, and that mm-hmm. was cool to like dive into things because you asked a question I saw on your Amazon when you're buying stuff. One of the questions is, hey, what's, what's something in your childhood that you haven't talked about before? Childhood pain. And mm-hmm. I think that's so important because we're talking about the layers that we're not going to mm-hmm. share unless we're asked by somebody else. Yeah. And I think what you guys have created is such a great solution because it's a great way to understand where is your, where does your, uh, maybe your dating person come from, where mm-hmm. does your spouse come from, and yep. then let understand the layers that create that person that you're even mm-hmm. holding hands with or, or even married to, right? At some right, point. right. Yeah card decks just make it so much more lighthearted and fun. Yeah. I mean, Mm -hmm. I don't know whose idea that was, but genius. (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) Oh, it, yeah, it came out from a lot of collaboration uh, with coaches too, you know, but, um, yeah. One of the reasons that, that you actually mentioned that we did it was because we saw the need and like, it's very difficult to find resources that don't, you know, you know, go ahead and uh, with your spouse, go watch porn, you know, like yeah. stuff like that, like stuff that we wouldn't espouse. That's not going to help a marriage. Or talk about how comfortable you feel bringing a third party like, to do a threesome. Yeah, like, yeah. All these things are so contraindicated, right? Right. It, from the research. Yeah. So, so we were like, we need to be able to offer a, a safe resource for couples to intentionally build their marriage. Yeah. And but, like you said, man, it, I wish we had these in the first year because um, maybe we'll get into this later on, but some of these topics were very hard to bring up. We didn't yeah. talk about sex very much in my house. Yeah. You know, we didn't talk about dating very much in the house. Mm-hmm. So when, you know, it doesn't all just come alive and the, the conversation for us didn't just like spontaneously bloom as soon as we got married right. because- yeah that was a weird, like, how do I express this need or this Mm -hmm. desire or, you know, it's not safe. So with, with the card decks that we, we design and we're not trying to push the card decks, I guess this is where we went, where we ended up, but we designed it so that, Hey, if you pull that card, you can ask, you know, what's your perspective on this? Mm -hmm. Do you have any, what's, what's your thought around this? And we hear routinely that one card will cause a two hour conversation mm-hmm. in a good way. Yeah. <laughs> Not an argument. Yeah. Hopefully. I love that. And from our perspective, there's so many, I mean, I could talk a lot. There's so many times where we, when we were in recovery and we were trying to rebuild intimacy, mm-hmm. I need to take a step back and just ask some lighthearted questions as well. And, and it started, I remember that we just went to dinner and I was like, because what do you talk about when you're in this place? Again, our story of betrayal and recovery. And it was like, you're, you want to go and you want to start dating again. You want to start like going back to a connection, but you're sitting there and you're like, man, what do we talk about if it's not a honey do list or a to do list and questions like, Hey, like if you could pick a superpower, what would it be? <laughs> and it's like so lighthearted, sure. but then it starts evolving. And I just love that because that took so much work. I remember multiple times mm-hmm. sitting at the table going, okay, we have a date night tonight. I better have something to ask her. And, yeah. she, and I'm sitting there like racking my brain, like, okay, what do I ask her about? Like, <laughs> what is a good question? And I came yes. up with 15 mm-hmm. and then I was done. I'm like, I don't know what else to ask. And so mm-hmm. I feel like your card decks provide a solution to that where mm-hmm. we don't have to be the therapist. We don't have to be the coach. Mm-hmm. We don't have to be the expert. 
you guys can be the expert. We can just be the people that go on Amazon and buy a deck of cards. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. So in your, in the place that you are, that you were like describing, mm -hmm. um, why did it become difficult? What was the, maybe the fear around the dinner time that you had going, or the trepidation going in? Mm -hmm. Why was the conversation hard for you? Great. I think specifically when we were in recovery, it was just, it was like, we, we didn't want to like push our boundaries, you know, like we wanted, cause we, we were both just trying to be safe people for the other person. So we were like writing our relationships so lightly. Yep. Yeah. And so we didn't want to talk about recovery cause it was so heavy and it was what we were, our minds were already focused on 24 seven in, yes. in the beginning. So I was like, okay, we don't want to talk about that. It's too heavy, too dark. And then it's like, okay, well, we already know about each other because we've been dating and married for a while, but it's mm. like, but we want to bring that lightheartedness and that joy mm. back again. So it was just, it was so just uneasy and nerve wracking to be like, how do we do this? Right. Mm -hmm. yeah, there's, there's the pressure all, there. And I think we all want to ask these questions. We just don't even know how to ask great questions. And that's yeah. why you're left after date nights just feeling still so empty and not even yeah. close to your significant other. You can, you can continue to put date nights on your calendar, but, and continue to feel left empty at the end of the week. If you're not being intentional with those date nights, mm -hmm. you know, getting, yes. to know their, getting to know the spouse and connecting. Oh. And we yeah. wanted to do that. We knew we had to do that if we were going to make our relationship thrive like we wanted to. Yeah, that's right. So I want to ask you guys a question. So, cause we can talk about your cards and I know you're not like, Hey, this isn't a sales pitch. Well, heck yes, it is. We want everyone to buy these. They're awesome. They're like, oh. They are awesome. I'll agree. <laughs> no, yeah. No, we're not unashamedly promoting yes. what you guys are doing. Oh, thank you. And the other thing I want to ask is let's get to the root. Why these are important mm. because we can, I think it's really okay. important for anyone to understand what it is, but we, we buy into the what when we buy into the why. Right. Yeah, and so you guys exactly. probably, I would assume you seem very smart. You seem very purposeful in everything you do. You didn't create these cards just to be there, just to have a product right. out there. You created right. these with an intention and purpose. Can you talk to us about that? What were these cards meant to do for a couple? Yes. Mm. Yeah. So the cards are designed to help a couple become more intimately connected. Um, and that's one of our core tenets of Dear Young Married Couple is to become intimately connected, get adventurous and find purpose. And depending on which deck you're in, you might be getting adventurous, you might be finding purpose, but no matter which deck you're in, you are becoming more intimately connected. And you could be going through a season of schooling. You could be going through a season of parenting, a season of ministry, a season of brokenness. Mm -hmm. And through all of that, you need to be intimately connected if you're going to fulfill the purpose that God has for you. And so these cards were designed to help couples who are on the go stay intimately connected, even if they don't have the time to read a book because they're in textbooks or they're grieving the loss of a loved one or whatever it is, you can still pull a card off of your dresser and stay intimately connected. And here's the deal, just to connect in with you, what you're saying, intimate connection um, has to be done on purpose. Yeah. So for instance, uh, I think Tim Keller from his book, The Meaning of Marriage, talks about um, that our deepest want or need in life is to be loved and known. Mm -hmm. Those are the two things, being loved and known. And well, and for a lot of people, being known but not loved is our greatest fear. That's probably what you were describing a second ago. Mm -hmm. Like we're working through this. I don't want to. I don't want to break our heart. I don't want to tree trigger. So we're going to step lightly around this and keep everything light. But when everything's light, it also doesn't feel substantive. Mm -hmm. It feels like we're just treading on eggshells, and we're not going. We're not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's that delicate balance of how much can our marriage uh, take right now? Can we go deep without triggering and getting into another argument? Mm -hmm. So, so being known um, is a very, very, very big deal. Mm -hmm. And uh, and a really wise therapist told us that everyone makes sense when you know their story. Mm -hmm. So many of us don't know the story of the other person. So I, I, I see the car decks and kind of like what we're talking about going deeper with your spouse. That's kind of, I, I would say the theme right now, mm -hmm. going deeper with your spouse is very intentional. I, I could see the fact that my wife is sitting here 
you know, she's, she's sitting here, she's nodding at me. She looks like she agrees, right? The fact, right? Mm -hmm. But the only way to know my wife is to actually ask questions and to open that book with her, mm -hmm. ask her to share and, and start to delving in. And hopefully you don't feel that your spouse is a book you've already read twice, right? Yeah. But they're, you're continually curious and seeking to learn. And, and that only really is really awesome and adventurous if you're continually growing. Yeah. Kind of throw that in, mm -hmm. um, growing together. And in that process, you start to become known. And through being known, you get to know what to love. Yeah. yeah. So, so good. good. Okay, well, let's dive into one of them, right? Sex expectations. I think this is so cool. <laughs> I love, first of all, I love that word. And yes. just, Thank you. I think, I mean, what I think of it when I hear that word is having expectations in the bedroom without even like talking about it, right? Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Talk about what that means and yes. go deeper from there. Yes. Absolutely. Okay. So, we like to tell people, and this is, if you get anything from this podcast, get this, this is really important, that frustration is the result of unmet or broken expectations. So a lot of people have frustration around their sex life. Mm -hmm. And because there's frustration, there's, of course, you know, it's not safe. Unmet expectations. Right. And yeah. it's hard to be vulnerable when there's frustration mm -hmm. and then things start breaking down. So expectations for us is, okay, well, let's talk about what are your expectations for me? Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, we are biologically fundamentally different yeah. from each other. Yep. Well, you know, what do you need from me? So I can, you know, help me help you, right? <laughs> that's, that's really what I need to know. Help me help you. Cause yeah. I want you, but give me, give me the the shortcut to your heart, <laughs> but give me yeah. the instructions because I would do things if it was just sex without, you know, it, I was going to say with just me, that doesn't sound right. But like, you know what I'm talking about? I, I, my style as a guy is completely different from hers. So mm -hmm. it takes me delving in and being willing to start to know and to ask questions and yeah. the cards start to facilitate that. Yeah. And sex expectations is about more than just what happens in the bedroom, but also what happens outside the bedroom. Mm -hmm. um, like Kevin Lehman says, sex begins in the kitchen, right? And so it's about finding out what are we doing on an intimate level? How can we do that better? What do you need from me? What do I need from you? Um, and so Adam said earlier, you know, uh, frustration is the result of unmet or broken expectations. It's also the result of uncommunicated expectations. So, so, so many times our, our, um, expectations go unmet or they get broken because we didn't communicate about them. Mm -hmm. So this is what sex expectations is all about. Like let's communicate our expectations. And we had a fun time writing this deck. Yeah. We actually go through it. I would say every six months or so. Yeah. Um, well, well, it's, Okay, so here's a tip. We have the card decks in our glove box. Yes. And Sex Expectations is my favorite deck, <laughs> of course. <laughs> but it's just there. So when we're driving, we have some of the our best talks, either driving or mm -hmm. backpacking in the woods. Yep. So we take them with us. And it's a great, uh, you know, like you said, you're on a date night, we'll grab the card deck out of the glove box, you know, and some people will put them on their bedside. Um, but it's a way for us to constantly be communicating and updating our recipe card yeah. of each other because our recipe changes. Mm -hmm. You can be, we've been married 13 years, but the Adam that I am married to today is not, uh, he doesn't have all the same eccentricities and giftings and thank God. <laughs> and all of the, um, you know, the recipe that made up Adam when we first got married, it's not the same recipe. So we have to constantly update that recipe card. What made you guys want to start one specifically for like sex? Uh, cause I feel like you could talk about anything, right? Yep. But sex is a, a, a deep question. one. Yes. Why yeah. not? <laughs> <laughs> well, really, it, <laughs> right? it boils down to 
in the church, sex is such a taboo subject. We're willing to talk about it in terms of like purity. Um, if you were privileged enough to even get a purity talk, but then that's it, right? It's like, it's a no, no, no. And then all of a sudden flip the switch, go, go, go. Once you get married and just figure it out, brother. Yeah. I mean, we don't really have a whole lot of healthy conversation about this in the church. And yet God is all about sex and intimacy. If you look throughout scripture, I mean, there are so many scriptures that highlight God's perspective on sex. I mean, we can go back to Genesis, um, but Genesis 2, 24, and then even in the New Testament, Matthew 19, 5, um, they both talk about becoming one flesh, but the very next verse, Genesis 2, 25, talks about what that means. It means being naked with your spouse and not ashamed and how that's actually God's design. It's good. Um, yeah, it's good. We see it in Proverbs 2. Um, in Proverbs chapter five, verses 18 and 19, um, it says to rejoice in the wife of your youth. And then the writer actually references specific body parts to satisfy you and to be ravished always with her love. Um, Can you explain which ones, babe? Oh yeah. Just joking. <laughs> <laughs> but it's there, it is so taboo and, um, we need to be celebrating this that sex is a gift and it's a beautiful thing. And the way your body functions and the way that, you know, you desire even before you're married, it's still a beautiful thing. We want to manage that gift well. Um, and so our intention was to help all the couples yeah. like us who grew up in healthy households. I mean, we were both raised in church with, you know, loving godly parents. Um, and we still found it awkward to talk about because, you know, sex is a worldly sinful thing and even the words for our anatomical parts are yes. weird to say out loud right yeah yeah i mean just think about it so all these these you know we're, we're primed since birth almost that you know you don't say this word this word this word because that's off limits and so what is that teaching the young our, our kids mm -hmm. you know like when's the last time that you uh, you know let me back up do you remember the the when you learn the word elbow no we no we, you you remember that that's a common term that you just learned when you were probably 18 months old and yeah. you don't remember right but what about yeah. vagina like do you remember that <laughs> yeah. yeah i do right too. so what does that tell you mm -hmm. and what does that tell the child you know that yeah. this is off limits this is so There's shame attached to it so we go from almost nothing into a marriage that okay now everything is supposed to be open and free and, and freely discussed and and then i have my own expectations and needs and mm -hmm. what are yours okay how do i fit that into my worldview and yeah. things get jumbled up a lot of times yeah and that's and we work with lots of couples every single week chris is a lmft or marriage and family therapist uh, i'm a life coach um, i work with a lot of people mm -hmm. um and this is a very common theme. We didn't talk about it. Yeah. We do lots of mar uh, premarital counseling too. And we talk about sex because that's a big deal. Like you're about to have it. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about it. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's amazing. Like the freedom and relief that people feel when we open up the conversation to say, okay, what questions do you have about sex? After we've talked a lot about different aspects and then we'll have premarital couples. that will be like, well, um, I don't even know if this is okay to ask, but, uh, and they're really, really like timid. Yeah. Here's the deal. You know, the world loves celebrating things mm -hmm. and human beings are drawn to celebrations. Yeah. yeah. We don't, I mean, we don't want to be left out of a celebration, right? Like you hear, like you didn't get, you didn't get invited to that party. Mm -hmm. oh, that's the bummer. Mm -hmm. Right. Why? why isn't the church celebrating something that's good and beautiful? Yeah. Every good and perfect gift cometh from the father. Mm -hmm. Like this is a beautiful gift. Why aren't we celebrating it? There's a whole book of the Bible. I, I heard someone said that the, the Bible is not for the prudish, <laughs> you know, like go read song of Solomon. Right. That will kind of change your perspective quick. Totally. But it's holy. Yes. It's good. Yep. So that's something that we, and you can probably tell, like, we talk about this a lot. We are passionate we're, about it. We're passionate yes. about it because it is healthy and good. And we see it's, it's really sad when there's a breakdown in a marriage around sexuality 
because it doesn't have to be bad. It doesn't have to be painful for people. Yeah. It can be a a, a area of strength Mm -hmm. and really make something like it it could just facilitate such uh, growth in people. And if there has been brokenness and breakdown around sexuality, that's different too. It, it can yeah. be, it can heal, but not only heal, it can become better than it ever was. And the stats say that, yeah, I yeah. see you, for those who are, are listening and not seeing this visually, we have mm-hmm. lots of celebration yeah. hands going up, but you know, the stats say that four out of five couples who actually seek help after a breach and trust, not only heal, but are better than they ever were. Mm-hmm. And so this is one of those resources to help people seek that, um, that healing. Well, they say that, um, it it takes about an average of four hours for a person to go to the emergency room after heart pain, Mm -hmm. but it takes, I think it was, uh, four years or five, six years years after the first signs of problems in the marriage for someone to, to reach out for help. Mm -hmm. And so, we, we sell a lot of these people, unfortunately, but for actually not, unfortunately, fortunately, fortunately, we yeah. see these people. We have numerous stories of watching people go from brokenness mm-hmm. to better than ever because they're forced to talk about these issues. Mm-hmm. Like we're not backward about it. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So good. Oh, so good. So many things. I, I want to ask a question that I've heard you guys share and talk about a topic on another podcast that I would love to go more in depth with you guys on, um, you guys have talked about giving and receiving and pleasure. And when I heard this, I was like, whoa, my mind <laughs> was like blown. Cause I was like, oh man, like this is really good stuff. And a lot of people don't talk about that. They talk yes. a lot about receiving or, you know, vice versa, but not both at the same time. Can you guys talk about that? Yeah, we'd love to. Right. <laughs> so before we talk about giving and receiving, it's important to understand that we are made in God's image and we are body, mind, and spirit. Um, when we experience in the body realm, we are sensing through our five senses. And that includes, you know, what we see with our eyes, what we smell with our nose, what we taste with our lips, what we touch with our hands, what we hear with our ears. And when you are in a sensual experience with your spouse, sensual, yes, it it, uh, is best uh, experienced through the lens of all five senses. And um, so often people limit their sexual intercourse to simply that just, Mm. you know, insert this here experience over and it's, and it's just procedural. And so we are big on helping people experience the gift that God has given them in their, their sexual, um, connection, not just as intercourse, um, but engaging all five senses Mm -hmm. and that's going to involve giving and receiving. Right. Well, and there are specific ways that we work with couples. Um, so for instance, sometimes, uh, there will be lots of performance anxiety, Mm -hmm which yep. is, um, you know, your, your mind. And what's happening is they're kind of outside of the bedroom, even though they're inside physically. Mm-hmm. So they're worrying about, you know, will I perform? Will I, you know, like, mm-hmm. will she like it? Or will he like it? Or, you know, is this enough? And all this mm-hmm. other thing. So this is very difficult because this is the one thing sex is the one time really that you have to be completely present for you to get everything out of it that God intended. Mm-hmm. Cause it's not, it's not just to get like, just give it to me, give it to me, give it to me. It's, it's reciprocal. Yeah. Right. So when people allow themselves to, to be in the moment, which means they start to focus more rather than on their thoughts that they're having, they focus on the senses of like the sensation of my wife's body or this, her, the feel of her skin, the smoothness of her hair. If I focus on the smell, the taste, the, so that helps me ground me in the, in the experience. And this is really, really helpful Mm -hmm. for people um, dealing with a lot of different issues, especially uh, sometimes, um, sometimes what will happen is we'll see couples get so focused on um, 
Like for instance, he only wants me for sex. Mm -hmm. That's all he wants me for. So if, if I let him touch me or I touch him, I know we have to have sex because then he'll pout, right? Mm -hmm. If I don't give it to him. And so then she's like, okay, fine. You know, and, and that's not a healthy interaction. Right. We don't want to just to give it just to get it over. How can you simultaneously give and receive mm -hmm. it's, and that has, that means that you're there on purpose. Yeah. You're not doing it just to help him meet a need. And then we get out. Mm -hmm. That's not, that's not, it doesn't make you want to go back. Right. So what we do sometimes is we, we slow people down and maybe put some boundaries on it and say, okay, well, maybe you guys specify, we won't do sex tonight, mm -hmm. but let's just touch mm -hmm. and let's just experience the sensations mm -hmm. and kind of back away from the whole performance. We have to get to intercourse because that's not the only type of like sex encompasses more than intercourse. Mm -hmm. So that's something that will work toward with people of breaking this, the, the idea that, you know, we can only touch each other when I want something, mm -hmm. why not touching each other just for the sake of touching and enjoying right. the person's presence and, and the gift that God's given you. And I'll actually use this concept a lot in working with women who are struggling with their identity as a sexual being. And, um, you know, they just lack desire. Um, they don't, you know, they're not able to have sex well in their mind because of how their body functions or, um, and so we'll actually work on, and I'll just have them pick out of the five senses, pick one that makes most sense, <laughs> that makes most sense for you, um, to focus on. Cause sometimes it's overwhelming to think about all five, yeah. you or, know? And so especially I've, a guy, right? Like yeah. he has never thought in this, in this direction before he's like, um, <laughs> senses, huh? Yeah. <laughs> like candles, dude, just get candles, and light, light a whole bunch of them and try that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But even like, um, this week I had a gal, a couple gals this week that are working through this, but one gal in particular, she chose smell. She's like, I want to focus on smell. I think that, you know, her, her idea was candles, but I was like, let's think beyond candles. Like what, what See, my mind doesn't go very deeply Yeah, I know. <laughs> on that, on that uh, aspect. But, um, we were like, what, um, what can you engage with your nose that goes beyond just the idea of a candle? And so we started talking about, you know, the smell of her husband's skin when they come freshly out of the shower and they lie in the bed, the smell of the linens. Um, for a lot of women, you know, there's a certain smell to their lingerie drawer, you know, focusing on that smell. Does that bring back memories? Does it, does it put you in a fantasy place where you can go back and relive a memory that you had early on in your marriage? Which could be very erotic. It can be absolutely erotic. And so all that by focusing just on smell and you can, uh, cause here's the thing, sex is not something that you do. It's a place that you go and oh. focusing on the five senses and even just one at a time can help you go to that place and experience it like God intended. So all of this is taking you out of the, oh, do I have to get it right? Uh, I hope I can perform here. I, uh, uh. Mm -hmm. and so many people get amped up and worried and forget, like, just enjoy it. Like, yeah. back up, take a breath. Yeah. Enjoy that. You yes. know, be young again. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I hear you guys saying. I hear you saying you're putting the desire back in. You're putting the fun back in, the joy back in. It's right. an experience. It's not a transaction. That's, yeah. a, that's a good way to say it. Yes, I exactly. That, so many couples, unfortunately, are experiencing is that it's a transaction. And I think... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think we have more and more, particularly Christian couples, who the Christian walk has become yeah. transactional. Even God right. himself, church yep. has become a transaction. Yep. Sex has become a transaction. Community yep. has become a transaction. And mm -hmm. yep. time in, time out of church, right? Like yeah. clock in, clock out. Yeah. And I love that because, you know, we do this with worship, right? With worship, yes, it's totally great to have just a guitar and have a worship session with a few friends. Or it's so awesome to see people come together and put their talents together as well and have a worship session with a full band and hear it come alive. Mm -hmm. awesome. And what I hear when, when I, you described the senses and that, yes. Yes. Like, oh, let's actually use all the things God's given us 
right experience that is euphoric absolutely and our relationship with each other ought to model christ's relationship with the church Mm -hmm. right and that's not just in you know the traditional ways that we see throughout scripture but our sex life should model that too and it's an ecstatic experience it's a it's a caressing experience and that's when we're in worship i mean think about it just focusing on um like uh, if we were to focus on sound, because you mentioned the music, right? So many ladies are like, what do I focus on in terms of sound? Like, okay, I could play some music, but but what else? Even just focusing on, focusing on your auditory, um, even non-words, but your auditory breath and your, your verbals that come out with oohs and ahs, like mm-hmm. that in and of itself, think about that in terms of worship. When you are worshiping the Lord and you just, have nothing to say. You're just basking in his presence, but you, you're just like, Oh God, like, Oh, like if you can really tune into your spouse that way, when you're making love, like it becomes that it becomes making love. Like that is such a loving experience when you can have those, those auditory expressions. And I love that because as you're talking about it, like I am like going yes and amen. And just to be, cause we are honest and we're vulnerable in this podcast. Like I am reliving those as we talk and what charity does in the bedroom. And I'm like, babe, we got to end this podcast real quick. Like, <laughs> we, gotta shut this down. we have just timed yes. out. <laughs> just don't say automatically. And we're done. Yeah. Yeah. It's all those things. And it is, mm-hmm. it's the way, it's the way she, you know, not to get weird, but it's like the way she breathes and the way. Yes. Uh, yeah. I, what happens is that we are, it's so unfortunate. And I love that we're talking about this because the church and, and we talk, and this is what we're rebranding with Restored to More, but we believe that marriage was meant to be inspirational. And unfortunately, yeah. the world has taken sex and they're the only ones, and I mean the secular world, they're the only ones talking about sex in a positive way. It's mm-hmm. in the rap songs, it's on the music videos, it's in the movies, it's in cinema, it's on every Netflix show. And that, yeah. that if you want to see great sex, go watch a movie. If you want right. to see great things, if you want to see what sex is about, go right. watch that. I don't even talk about porn. But, but like, isn't oh. it? It's false advertising. <laughs> because you really can't get being loved and known outside of a committed relationship. A covenant a marriage. Covenant. Yeah. yeah, it just won't happen because you, you won't be able to trust and have commitment there for the vulnerability needed yeah. to get to the heights mm-hmm. of beauty that you could have in that. Mm-hmm. So true. And that's what you're saying, Adam, is like, it's not only about it, and it's, it's, and it's in addition to the covenant, mm-hmm. it's being known. And if you yeah. actually, if you actually study these movies and these videos, there is no sense of being known. No. So there's no true intimacy because they can't be fully loved unless you're fully known. You can't that's fully love right. somebody if you don't know who they are and what they've been through and their struggles and their vulnerabilities. You not got it. Yeah. All of the cards you've created is getting fully known. And then transfer that to the bedroom mm-hmm. and it's the experience that we see in song of solomon yes. where it's intoxicating like they are yes. intoxicated yes. with each they other are. is we are able to experience that that is achievable yep. yeah we're doing what you guys are talking about yeah yes it really absolutely is. and it's something to look forward to i think you know so many people i remember in 2020 we are working with them uh that felt like they're on a hamster wheel confined and like mm-hmm. It was just, and even now, like I'm just in this rut of routine Mm -hmm. that's just over and over and it starts to lose its, its luster. It's just the same thing over and over. And, and I think for a lot of people, sex has become that for them. Mm -hmm. It's just the same thing. It's just like you're saying, transactional, Mm -hmm. transactional. Mm-hmm. Transaction. No. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, before. I'm trying to say it, but I'm like already into my next sentence here. So simply putting a little bit of forethought and intentionality into what you're doing, mm-hmm. it will bring like it's interesting. You know, December doesn't have to be one of the funnest months out of our year. It's dark, it's dreary there's rain, there's snow, there's, you know, all that stuff, right? It's short, the short days, but yet we find a a glowing beacon of Mm -hmm. wonder there, don't we? Yeah. On, on the 25th. 100%. 
we all love Christmas. And we, leading up to it, the look, anticipation. The anticipation. Of it. We look forward to it. We have gifts there. We have all this stuff. So I think that this is one of the elements that that couples have forgotten. Mm -hmm. Your summer can be brilliantly just be so much fun if you have that one vacation you're looking forward to because it's that is going to be amazing. Sometimes it's not even the vacation, it's the looking forward to it that yeah. makes your days shorter. And yeah. So mm -hmm. What would that look like, people that are listening? <laughs> if you started, you know, dating your spouse, you know, we have these wonderful tools called phones. They don't have to only destroy marriages. Mm -hmm. We can also text and and help our each other. Like Krista texted me the other night. And I was like, Oh yeah, I love you, babe. You're so amazing. <laughs> and she texted me, it was very like, you know, help me look forward. Mm -hmm. to what was coming. Yeah. I'll just leave it there. <laughs> but may my day so much better. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't take a lot of effort. It just takes a little bit of us tuning in. Mm -hmm. And like there's nothing sexier when I know that she's enjoying herself. Mm -hmm. yeah. When we are when we are both present and both enjoying ourselves but also in tune with each other and helping mm -hmm. them enjoy it. Yeah. That's where that's that's where the beauty is. Yeah. The anticipation piece is, is real and it's, um, we can liken it to planning a vacation and getting on a family text and everyone getting so excited about, you know, the vacation, we can liken it to our relationship with the Lord. You know, we anticipate like, oh, this season, it's going to be such a beautiful season with you, Lord, like, uh, or this worship service. And I can't wait to just bury myself in prayer. Or when I hear this song, come on, like, right. you know, all those things. Well, communicate with your spouse about those things too, when Bring you're anticipating. Yeah, yeah. When you're anticipating your um, relationship sexually and intimately. We need more couples to share the goodness of sex and the goodness yes. of just what you're talking about dating your spouse again, because I think that will inspire like what we were talking about earlier. And Clint was saying is that will inspire a younger generation to want to get married mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right now younger kids don't want it. It seems like, oh, well, you know, sex life is nah, because people don't talk uh -huh. about it. It gets better. It's just like kind of ends. People joke about that. Mm -hmm. No one's saying that Christians have the best sex. No. <laughs> so I think if you do that, Paul, I wonder what the percentage would be like, hey, so do you think Christians or non-Christians have better sex? Uh, yeah. <laughs> we should do a Seriously. poll. Seriously. Like positive for us. We're just so it's sad. sad. Yeah. It is. Yeah. Well, let me tell everybody, we were married at 21 and she was 19. Yep. And if you told me that, like that sex got better, I'd be like, you're smoking, bro. Like, <laughs> nah. But dude. It's what, way 13 better. 13 years. Yeah. And, and with a lot of sex expectations. Yes. And it can't get better. Like it's <laughs> what. Well, I hope it does. And now we think, right, it can't get any better than it is now. But hey, 13 more years from now, we're going to be like, hey, we thought it was so amazing at 13 years. But I'm in. so much more experienced at knowing her. Yeah. That's and then it. I'm more experienced at loving him. Yeah. yeah. And like you said, I love that. I'm, I'm just going to re-quote you. And that's sex is not something you do. It's a place you go. And I think if, if our listeners can understand that and then start to ask questions, as to how do I get that place that I go better mm -hmm. turn towards what you guys are creating. We got to wrap up here. Can you guys tell us one more time how everybody can get plugged in to all you guys are creating and working on? With sure. Yes. Yes. So um, you can connect with us at Dear Young Married Couple on Instagram. Um, you can also go to our website, dearyoungmarriedcouple.com. And we have a podcast, Dear Young Married Couple, all the things, Facebook, um, YouTube. Also, something that I would that's a steal of a deal, I think, um, is we we do what's called a or, or um, our monthly live date night. And it's just where we pick a topic. I, we've done sex before. Um, we've done lots of different topics mm -hmm. and uh, we just pick it and run with it. And um, it's a community of people that's, that's, it's really, really, really fun because yeah. we get to answer questions and it's about an hour and a half long every 
a month. Mm-hmm. Once a month on a Friday night at 5 p.m. Pacific. And we just go live with our community of couples. The first hour we spend on the topic itself. And it's always practical. We include a PDF for them to not just listen, but also like put it into practice in their marriage right away. Yeah. And then um, the next 30 minutes are live Q&A on any topic. That we always they have. forget to talk about that. <laughs> but yeah. it's like one of the coolest things. That we, we love do. it. So that um, and our, then our card decks, foundations, um, and then realizations. You can search those both on Amazon. Um, and then sex expectations is on Amazon, but you can't search it, unfortunately, because they tagged us as being an adult product. And <laughs> so that's rough. So what you have to do is just Google sex expectations, dear young married couple, and we'll like pop up to the top. Yep. Cool. Yeah. And then we also have Fundamentos as well, which is the yeah. Spanish version of Foundations that just came out a few months ago. Hey, so you can find that on Amazon too. That right on, man. Yes. Great. So awesome. Well, thank you guys so much. Oh my goodness. I was blessed. Aww. I'm just so excited for our listeners to listen to this. Thank you guys for having us on. It's an honor. We love what you guys are doing and how you're sharing your story. It's inspiring a lot of couples, I'm sure. It's courageous. It is courageous. It's brave. As, as our daughter would say, I'm, I'm strong, brave, and courageous. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, you guys. Have a great rest of your day. Thanks for being with us. Thank you, Thank guys. Thank you.